Kim Jackie, your guide to Kimchi Universe. In recent years, kimchi has been gaining popularity around the world. Nowadays, you can buy kimchi in most of the Asian supermarkets and some Western groceries. Even though kimchi is a very accessible food throughout the stores now, it's more fun and delicious to make your own. Traditionally, Korean people make kimchi once a year, usually late November to early December. It's called kimjang. Kimjang is the act of kimchi making and kimchi sharing. But I like to call it a kimchi party. So I decided to have a kimjang with my friends. Cyber kimjang, that is. First, let's go shopping for the ingredients. My name is Lisbeth Teopako. No, I've never made kimchi before. No. Nope. Nice heavy one. Ah, there. Oh my goodness. How much ginger do I get? A lot? Oh wow, look at the price of that one. It's the same. Okay, cool. I'll get this one. The anchovy kind. The vegetables, of course, was easy. Um, picking the salt and picking the right type of peppers was difficult. To make the most basic kimchi, you need the following ingredients. Napa cabbage, radish, green onion, red pepper flakes, sea salt, fish sauce, seojat, which is salted shrimp, garlic, and ginger. And to make this kimchi making experience more exciting, I reached out for help. Hi, I'm Chef Judy Ju, and I am a restaurateur, author, and TV personality, and kimchi connoisseur. Yes, the here. Iron Chef, Judy Ju. Iron Chef Judy Ju. Okay, it's Judy. Take it away. Nice to meet you guys. Thank you so much for joining me on this kimchi universe journey. Is this everybody's first time making kimchi? Yes. I love it. Okay, so I'm very flattered that your first time's with me. So we're gonna, of course, start out with a nice big head of Napa cabbage. But what we're gonna do first is that we're going to get rid of these um, leaves on the outside. And the way that you cut it is that you start in the middle, okay? And you go all the way through, and then you pull it apart like this. I have a pot here of warm water, and I'm going to add some beautiful Korean solar salt in here. And as you know, if you can't get Korean salt, you can use any kind of salt. So I have about a cup of solar salt here. You want to just taste it. And it just has to taste salty, but not overly salty. And ideally, you would let this cool to room temperature, right? And I'm going to put it cut side up. And then I'm going to take my bowl and then just weigh it down. You can do it either way, right? So make sure it's fully immersed. And that you can leave at room temperature or someplace cool overnight, not only for taste, but that's the first part of fermentation. So the difference between fermentation and making a pickle, the main difference is that when you ferment something, you're not using vinegar. Kimchi, no vinegar. So this brining is very important because that salt kills all of that bad bacteria. Kimchi fact. Kimchi is really good for you because it is full of probiotics, lactobacillus, which is all of the good bacteria in your gut. And this good bacteria really boosts your immune system and keeps your entire body healthy. So now you guys have your brined cabbage, right? So you want to taste a little bit. If it's too salty, rinse it. Now when you drain it, drain it with the cut side down, right? So next what we're gonna do is we're gonna prepare our vegetables. So you guys all have your scallions. So you're gonna just cut them into pieces like, like that. You're gonna cut them lengthwise, you're gonna split them. So depending on how thick they are, you're gonna make kind of like matchsticks a bit, okay? Yeah, perfect. Let me see some cutting. Let's do it. Let's see. All right, Ashley, you're looking good there with your nice skills. I like that. All right, so now we also have a daikon radish. Okay, so you just cut it in half and then you're gonna peel it. Cutting thin slices 
of the radis. You don't have to do too much, right? And then you're going to stack up the slices and just make matchsticks. So if you have a mandolin, you can do that also in there. Who else is ready for the next step? Okay, so the ladies, you can start measuring out some of your ingredients, okay? So for the gochugaru, this is Korean chili flakes. Start out with half a cup. You might use a little bit less. You could use a little bit more depending on how hot you like it. And actually gochugaru is made from Korean chilies and it's made from just the skins. It's dried in the sunlight. It's really nice. And then you guys also have something funny looking in a jar, like little tiny shrimp that uh, kind of looks like krill, exactly. This is called seojat. And this is a fermented shrimp, salted shrimp. It's very Korean. You really have to go to a Korean grocery store to find this ingredient. And it is where a lot of the umami and the deep complex flavors of kimchi comes from. I am using about um, three tablespoons of this seojat. And then you guys also have ginger and garlic. Let's see, it's about 60 grams of garlic. So that's probably about like a quarter cup. Yeah. And probably about the same, if not a little bit more of ginger. Get, get a big, big, big bowl. And you can put the gochugaru, seojat, ginger. Try not to get too much of that water. You're gonna add also some of the Korean anchovy sauce. You're gonna use about a quarter cup of this. So do I mix this all up together? You're gonna to mix this together in a bowl. So you see, I've got this here. Because we're using jarred ginger and garlic and there was a lot of water in that, it's actually quite spreadable. But sometimes this paste is a little bit dry. You can just add some water. Yeah, do we add sugar to this too? It's not necessary. If you want to, you can. If you want to add a sweetener, I, I sometimes add some plum extract. If you want to add some sugar, you can. So then I'm going to try a little bit of this paste. It should taste salty. So in this bowl, right, you have your paste. Add your um, daikon and your scallions a bit and just mix that kimchi fact in korea most families have something called a kimchi refrigerator that keeps their kimchi fresh for years it's set at an optimal temperature not only to keep it at the right level of coolness but also humidity so it keeps the kimchi really really tasty crisp and fresh tasting so you're going to put the cabbage down on the cutting board and then you just grab a handful of the paste and then you're going to rub the leaves with, with the paste. And about how much do we put on the um, a paste do we put on the cabbage? So this is where you have to eyeball things. And you're starting from, from the outside. And you're gonna have some of the, the, the radish and the scallions in there. Do you wanna Next? get it all the way? <laughs> I didn't know everything went in. Okay. But you wanna get it all the way into the root. And you want to make sure everything is all red. You want to make sure that everything is covered. It looks like we need more sauce. And then you're going to take the outermost leaf and then try to wrap it around and swaddle it like, like a baby, OK? And then I'm going to place it into my kimchi container. And you'll notice. Um, when you first start fermenting this, a lot of liquid's gonna come out of it first. That's absolutely fine and expected. It might be a little bit brownish. So you're gonna leave it at room temperature, depending on how it tastes. Um, and then once you put it in the fridge, 
it'll, it'll keep fermenting, but it retards the fermentation process. So it slows it down. So you leave it out at room temperature for however long you want. Just keep tasting it. And also, you'll notice it'll start bubbling. You can press it down. That's fine to check up on it, try it. But depending on how you like it, then you can put it in, in the fridge. And that's it. So that's your, uh, your kimchi. OK. Thank you, everyone. Yay. Yay. It's good. That wasn't so bad, was it? After just a few days of fermentation, I can eat my kimchi I made. I am so excited. All right, guys, that's it for today's episode, but we will be back soon with more kimchi stories. Thank you for watching. Bye, guys. Hey, uh, are, are you guys ready to taste your kimchi? Yes. yes. All right. How is it? It's a very strong flavor. Tastes sweet, but then weird sour. <laughs> yeah. This is what it looks like. And I'm gonna try some. It's really good. Before this, I had only eaten my mom's kimchi, but now I think I can make it myself. I also think mine tastes better. Tasty. It wasn't as difficult as I thought it was gonna be. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to trying it again.